Good morning, Bulldogs. I'm Tristan Cook. And I'm Carla Perez. Welcome to your BNN News Show. This week, we'll be showing you more on gymnastics, kindness week, and data match. All this and more here on your Bulldog News Network. The gymnastics team competed in conference this past Tuesday, making it their most recent meet in their perfect season. BNN reporter Julia Eakin spoke to two of the players about their feelings on the season so far. The gymnastics conference tournament took place Tuesday, February 12th at Columbus North High School. BNN spoke to junior Sammy Hethkitt and freshman Abigail Jacoby to learn about their experiences in the competition. At conference, the team did really well. Uh, we could have done better because we had quite a few falls, but overall we got a 108, which is a pretty good score for our team. But I feel like we could have stayed tighter and done a little bit better. I feel like we could have done a lot better. We had a few falls and we weren't as good on beam as we, I thought we could be, but overall we did really well. My favorite event is probably beam because I'm able to like flow through my routine pretty quickly and it's not as scary as the other events. <laughs> my favorite event to compete is probably floor because it's really fun and you get to be creative with it. Being high school gymnastics is different from like club because I have a like a team cheer for and it's like super supportive and I get to see like the people at school every day. Um, for the postseason, we are working on some new skills, but mostly just perfecting the routines that we currently have and doing those with consistency and staying on the events. The gymnastics team will be heading to sectionals February 12th to learn more contact the athletic office. This is Julia Eakin reporting for BNN. Track season officially started this Monday. BNN spoke to track participants to talk about their expectations for the season. BNN sat down with Arik Tong to talk about the beginning of track season. Um, I run track because it teaches me a lot of work ethic. Um, I ran track for a long time. My older sister runs track, so it's kind of just something that I've always done. Practices are usually, so we meet in the pool lobby and for us, since we do, since I do like mid to long distance, I run around Columbus and so we'll do trips down to Donner or we'll run down to like country roads and other kinds of things like that. Well, we either do long runs, workouts or easy days which are CTs and so with the long runs we'll run up to like seven miles. Then sometimes we'll do like workouts on the track where we run 100 meters, like 400 meter splits or 800 meter splits. I'm pretty excited because we have a couple of new freshmen, so I'm excited to see how they perform in the track. And I'm excited to see the other events that I might be participating in this year since last year. I kind of just ran a lot of different events. This is Nick Holt reporting for BNN. This week, Columbus North has celebrated Kindness Week with a theme each day. BNN reporter Tristan Cook spoke to student Andrea Contreras about how she celebrated Kindness Week. BNN sat down with sophomore Andrea Contreras to talk about Kindness Week and how it affected her positively and in the future. Kindness Week is like just trying to remind everybody that we don't always have to be mad or depressed all the time, that we can like have good moments and that this week can help remind us that we can be happy and like other people can help us be happy. The way I've been spreading kindness is instead of just not acknowledging other people, I guess. Like I, like if I don't speak to this person a lot, I try and like go out of my way and like become more friends with them. And like I've been just trying to be nicer to everybody in general. Lately, instead of just saying like hi to someone or just being random, I guess, I tell them I love you. I've experienced kindness from other people when they say I love you back and it makes me feel good. Well, by receiving kindness from other people, it just like, it feels nice and I, I can feel a little happier 
the way I'll keep being kind after this week is like, it's become part of my personality that I just be nice to people now. And I just try and stay happy for everybody else. So it's just like, it's become a part of me now. This is Tristan Cook reporting for BNN. On Friday, February 22nd, Japanese students will be putting on a play for young elementary students at Schmidt. BNN spoke to Japanese teacher Elizabeth Bays to learn more about how classes are preparing for the play. BNN sat down with Japanese teacher Mrs. Bays to discuss the play they'll be performing for Schmidt Elementary students. Uh, the play is called uh, Nezumi no Yomeiri, which translates to Mouse Bride. And it's just a kind of traditional Japanese folk tale. We've been working on it already for almost two weeks, and we needed to read it, needed to understand it. That was the first part. And then we uh, picked roles and got a crew, and so we have uh, plenty of students that can work in multiple capacities. Well, the easy thing about the play is it's what's in the textbook. <laughs> So that means it's, it comes with um, uh, animation, if you will, not animation, but uh, it's illustrated and so it was easy for my kids, my students to understand and then I thought that would help them then share it with other students because they would already fully understand it well and could then share it. I think it's just an exposure, fun exposure to Japanese culture, traditional Japanese storytelling and my hope is that uh, some of them might develop an interest in studying Japanese when they get older. Um, and I think it's not very long, so it's kind of a fun thing. And I also really want my own students to understand the art and science of comprehensible input, which is how do I get stuff in people's heads if they don't know the language? Which, you know, at North we have lots and lots of people who are multilingual and it's a skill that everybody can, can benefit from understanding and, and gaining experience and exposure to. This is Sam Lawson reporting for BNN. February is Black History Month, which celebrates influential people and events in black history. BNN spoke to students about how Black History Month impacts them. Black History Month takes place during the month of February. It's a way to recognize important people and events that has occurred in black history. BNN sat down with Denzel Thomas and Marcus Murray to discuss their views on Black History Month. Well, for me, personally, like we, I don't really care about it too much because like when it comes down to it, we don't really get taught about it, we don't know why we have it or anything like that. But otherwise, I'm glad that we have our month, our month for our race, you know what I mean? Well, how do I celebrate Black History Month to my family? and other church members to get together and we have a huge barbecue every Sunday. Well, I'd say Black History Month stands out to me just because, you know, my ethnicity, I'm black, and that's a month dedicated to my race, so that's probably why. It matters to me because I feel like I actually can, like, feel happy about being black and having, like, I guess, my own month to learn about my own history is great. Well, some African Americans that had influence on my life, but I'd try to say Martin Luther King and like Rosa Parks for how they stood up for what the, for the race and all that. Black athletes, I guess, would have to be like Jesse Owens or anyone that did like the Olympics and just stood out and represented the black people because I don't like that many. This is Corbett Armstrong reporting for BNN. Every year, North passes out matchmaking surveys that students can take to get results that pair them with other students in the school. Student assembly members passed back results in the comments this past week. Here's Kyle Carlson to tell you more. BNN sat down with student assembly members Lauren Greiner and Emily Herndon to learn their opinion on the data match surveys. Last year I did purchase a data match just to see what it was about. Emily Herndon discusses whether or not they believe the overall results are accurate. They match, they're mostly accurate. Sometimes they're a little off on more like dating matches, but with friend matches, they're pretty accurate with that. I knew quite a few people on my list last year. I have not done the data match before like freshman year. Day match is a really fun opportunity just to pass, meet new people and see new people in school. I would suggest the data match to others because it's kind of cool to see who else is out there and 
who you might actually like be like. Student Assembly will be selling the results of the surveys during lunch through this Friday. This is Kyle Carlson reporting for BNN. And that's it for today, Bulldogs. I'm Carla Perez. And I'm Tristan Cook. Have a great weekend.